In the last video, I picked up a cheap mech from Kmart and asked you guys what I should do with it. And a lot of people said to mod it, but it's actually really tough to do something worthwhile because it's just too far gone. But I had the Ducky slash HyperX 1-2 Mini next to me and thought that would be worthwhile sprucing it up. A super popular keyboard, a heap of people have it. And this one being the HyperX version, I thought they had some decently smooth switches. So yeah, we're going to try and make this as nice as possible. But first, let's have a quick listen to it in its stock form. So not bad, just as you'd expect, but a fair way out from like a high-end custom mech. So let's do it. What I want to do with this is make it better, but try and keep as many of the parts as possible. Like obviously an easy way to change how it looks and feels is to just change the case. And even changing the switches as well, it won't be a one 2 mini anymore. Right, so the worst bit with this is the soldering. Uh, this board in particular with the HyperX switches have RGB LEDs, but are through hole rather than SMD. So they have four pins in addition to two switch pins, so that's six pins per switch, times 61, and that's 366 joints to suck up. So these are the HyperX RED switches, and they're very similar to Cherry MX RED's in specs, but with a slightly shorter travel. But to make them feel better, and it will make a huge difference in how the whole board feels, we're going to loop them and spring swap them. Unfortunately, the bottom switch housing doesn't allow for switch films, even though it looks like it, so yeah, can't do that. We're going to use Crytox 205GO G0 uh, for our lube, which is a solid all-rounder. And for the springs, I have 55 to 62 gram face switch springs. Thanks, Tommy. And these are actually already lubed. Lubing is a super time-consuming process, especially if you want to do it relatively well. Uh, but since it's just for me, I wasn't super careful, and I'm using a pretty thick brush for this. Here's the steel mounting plate. It does have a completely standard ANSI layout, but because it's using plate mount stabilizers, I won't be swapping it. And the stabilizers weren't too bad as well, as they are slightly looped from the factory. Since it's a limited edition board, I do want to keep that red HyperX theme, and there's branding and stuff as well, so I'm going to keep the bottom piece as is. And it was a little scary to pull it apart, as it's just like plastic clips holding the two pieces together. For the top piece though, we're going to use a metallic paint so that it at least looks a little like metal. 
I was going to go with a metallic red, but then decided to go with a light silver, which still keeps in theme. To the bottom piece, this is a classic tray mount design, meaning that the PCB is screwed to the bottom of the case. Uh, this can result in an uneven and also harder typing experience. The bottom mount is harsher where these points are, and especially with a steel plate, it doesn't really give that satisfying thocky experience. So one thing we can do is remove that middle standoff. Whether it makes a difference, I uh, don't know, but whatever. And soldering time. Another thing we like to do to help with the bottom out feel, uh, acoustics and just to make the case feel more full, is to add foam. I couldn't be bothered to order something online and wait, so I went to my local hardware store and this is what I found. I'm not recommending it or anything, it's just what I saw and it was like 6 bucks, so not bad. It's 4mm thick and seems to compress a little bit and I was worried because there's actually not a whole lot of room in the case and the standoffs are super short, like 1.5 to 2.5mm so not much room at all. First attempt, no chance, not even close to fitting. Then I removed a little more and I actually got this to screw down into place after a lot of force but it was bulging and the bottom out was just way too solid which makes sense. And I didn't like how it felt at all, it needed some flex especially towards the middle and we did remove that middle standoff so we should give it that room. And I ended up with this, just a bit in that deep bit at the back, 
and then those two bits on the sides. So yeah, not much really. And here it is, all done. Pretty nice. I'll put GMK Hamon on top to keep with the Hyperx theme. And yeah, that's the one major substitute I did make to the keyboard. There's not a whole lot you can do with modern keycaps. I didn't want to paint them and you can't dye them since they're already black, so it gets the GMK treatment. The silver finish ended up pretty nice and is sleek and smooth. And it just breaks up the look of the board, being sandwiched between the red top and red bottom. It would look more like metal if the shape of the plastic was maybe thicker, like on the side profile you can pass it off a of metal, but the shape and the red plastic beneath it gives it away, uh, but the finish itself can easily pass for a sparkly anodized finish. One thing that I don't particularly like is that the bezels don't go that little bit higher, like one millimeter higher, and it would reduce that gap where we can see the key switches, and that doesn't really align with the enthusiast consensus. But yeah, it is a plastic case in the end and doesn't emulate a nice metal case. Plastic doesn't mean it's bad though, there's some amazing layered acrylic boards out there which look and feel amazing, but being a plastic shell design, it's a little different. Alright, now to the important bit. How does it feel and sound? It sounds a whole lot different. First thing you'll probably hear is that it's a lot quieter, and it is. Originally the key presses were quite high pitched with a sharp top and bottom out sound. Keep in mind that the keycaps also contribute to this a bit too. Uh, and there was also a bit of metallic ping before, but that wasn't super audible. So a quick rundown, we lubed and spring swapped the switches, removed the middle standoff, and added a bit of foam to the bottom. Lubing makes a massive difference. You can hear that there's less scratch and it dampens the switch internally. The heavier springs also dampen it a little bit so it's much quieter. And instead of having that high pitched uh, sharp sound, it's much more mellow and dense. There's no longer any metallic ping and the sound is much more self-contained. I did find the Hyperx Red switch to be decently smooth for a stock switch. Certainly much better than a Cherry MX Red which it's based off. And with the lube, it feels fantastic. Not the smoothest switch out there, but pretty damn smooth and satisfying. The 55 to 62 gram face springs are pretty weird though. I kind of wish I used something a bit more normal so that it would be easier to compare, but it's what I had on hand and I thought I might as well. It has a bottom out of 62 grams, which is somewhat light actually, 
but an initial weight of 55 grams, which is quite heavy. For reference, a Cherry MX Black Switch, which is regarded as a heavy switch, has an initial weight of like 40 grams or something. I think that's how it works, I may be wrong. But it is definitely a little fatiguing to type on for me personally, and that initial weight makes it feel a little stiffer and definitely contributes to the sound as well. Also with the plastic case, the bottom out just doesn't feel as tight as like a high-end custom would be like. Uh, not sure how to explain it, like customs can have that bit of give and flex and that's what many are designed to do, but it still feels solid as it's usually to do with the plate mounting. With this, it feels like I'm feeling the table when I type, that sort of bassy feel, so it doesn't quite reach that custom level and you wouldn't expect it to, uh, but it sure is a whole lot different to how it felt stock. And besides the weight of the springs, it's a really enjoyable typing experience. Oh, and the stabilized keys are much better, no rattle, and have a thockier sound and feel. And that's my upgraded 1-2 Mini. I hope you liked it. It's a lot of work, but if you disregard the keycaps, it's not actually that expensive. With a normal 1-2 Mini, so not the Hyprex version, it would be much easier to desolder because it has SMD LEDs, and you don't need to desolder those, but do at your own risk, you can potentially wreck your PCB, and warranty definitely won't cover that. The paint job bit is totally doable though, if you're game to take it apart. Um, and anyway, I think it turned out great, let me know what you think. And I do have something else planned for that cheap Kmart board, so stay tuned for that.